here with head women's basketball coach Carrie Lohr as we preview the 2018-19 women's basketball season. Last season was a was a strong return to prominence for your program, going 19 and 8, 14 and 6 in the league, hosted a playoff game. Um, wrap up that season, uh, kind of close the books on it. What were you most happy with when you when you think back about that 17-18 season? I was really proud of our seniors, um, Shannon Wilson, Peyton Birchmeyer, and Sarah Rustoffer in last year's senior class. Um, they played significant minutes their junior year and. We were only able to, to come up with eight wins, so for them to really flip the switch and and have you know embark on almost a 20 win season, and, and I thought we put ourselves in a good position to get to the NCAA tournament. Um, we came up short with that, but you know that's all you can ask uh, of your team each season is is try to put yourself in the right position at the end of the year, and um, you know to go from eight wins to 19 and, and not essentially really change anything um you know it's not as if we changed our defensive philosophy yeah. it's not as if we changed our offense i think it was just more of a mindset in the and the will to win that our, our seniors carried us yeah that was one of the better turnarounds uh in in the country for division two so um i imagine that you're going to want to do something similar expectations are always high around here especially um for you since you arrived some experience coming back you lost quite a bit like you said but um, what are your thoughts, just initial thoughts on this year's roster as you gear up for the first couple of days of practice? I think the thing that, you know, we're looking at is, gosh, how do you replace Shannon Wilson? And you, and you just don't. Um, she was just such a, an important piece to who we were a year ago and really for the four years she was here. Yeah. Um, how do you replace Peyton Birchmeyer, who might not have, have had huge numbers but was such an anchor for us and played – major minutes and, and Sarah Rustoff for embracing the sixth man role and knowing that when you went to your bet you had experience so I, I there's so many unknowns for us right now and with the NCAA rules and getting minimal time with your team I, I feel like I've had about eight total hours yeah. since March 1st so I, I just feel like there's some unknowns but what I can say is that our team has been really, really focused in the conditioning, really focused in their preventative maintenance and injury. Um, I feel like we're really strong right now. I feel like we're quick right now. Our preseason conditioning, is this has probably been the best um, since I've been here. So I definitely attribute that to our, our strength and conditioning coach and certainly to our trainer and keeping people healthy. But um, there's definitely an excitement among the team. But I think for me as a coach, some unknowns. Take a little uh, preview of the of the GLIAC for us. Ashland's always going to be solid. They're going through a little bit of a, a change. I, we expect them to be solid, but look at the league and, and kind of where uh, the pecking order, kind of what you're expecting from the GLIAC this year. Well, I think the the league is, brings back a lot of, lot of quality players, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Uh, Grand Valley, to me, is really the front runner. Um, losing essentially one player who played significant minutes um, down the stretch and, and into March for them, they really bring back four key players. And so I think they're really the team to beat. I also think Northern Michigan is going to be kind of that sleeper who, or maybe not even sleeper is the right word. I mean, they, they bring back everybody. I think they're, they're scoring from one through six. And, and it looks like they've got some players healthy that played a couple years ago. So I really think Northern's going to be um, really one of the top teams as well. And then, you know, gosh, I remember when Carrie Doherty was Ashland and she helped Sue Ramsey take him to the tournament back in 2013. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since she arrived at Ashland, she's really created a legacy um, on the court and then as an assistant and now as a head coach. So I anticipate Ashland is, is in really good hands and, and that they're going to have a great season as well. Four new faces on the roster this year. Talk about that group, and, and will any of them make an impact on the varsity level? You know, I, I think our freshmen are, are really a unique class in that they are overachievers in every sense of the word. Um, they really came in with just high, high aptitude scores out of high school and are really proving and pushing for 
for spots and their conditioning workouts. So they're not acting like freshmen right now. They're certainly inexperienced. Um, there's going to be peaks and valleys as there always are with, with freshmen. Um, but, I, but I think that um, we can expect to see some help from uh, Sam Cherney on the inside. And um, I think Alexis Miller is really going to press to get some backup minutes at the point guard. So um, I am really, really happy with this class. And, you know, I, I never have to worry about them. I think you every year you kind of worry about your freshmen and are they finding their way. And, um, boy, they've, they're really actually leaders already on, the, on and off the court. So I'm excited for them, but I think that it's a four-year process. Just to wrap up here, this will be your eighth season at Wayne State. Um, have you changed, evolved any? Talk a little bit about that and uh, kind of what keeps you motivated to stay at Wayne State and uh, kind of look into the future a little bit um, as, as far as you individually as a coach. You know, it's hard to believe that it is my eighth season. Um, I, I definitely think that I've made changes. I think you have to as a coach. I think you have to kind of change not only with the game, but with each each generation of, of young people. And that is exciting to me. And that it is really what kind of motivates me to, to come in the gym and, and work with young people. And, you know, if you've ever worked with young people, whether at a high school level or junior high, um, certainly I'm fortunate to be at the college level, that there's certain excitement about them. And um, just kind of watching the whole process um, as they learn and grow through managing academics to eating right, to sleeping right, and taking care of themselves. And then, you know, taking that kind of that philosophy that they were their best player and now forming that into a team is is fun. And um, I love what I do, and I'm, I'm really fortunate. I wouldn't change it for anything.